Do, 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 do. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. I have got the devil. El, no, not El, Le Diable as the uh, obstacle, obviously, no. And, uh, and the chariot as the opportunity. So let's get started here. Um, devil's got a lot of interesting interpretations. Um, I think that one of the one of the valuable things to keep in mind insofar as this card could could represent how how people see you or the kind of role that you could play in someone's life um, I see this as this reminds me of all the times when two kinds of people came together in a, a type of relationship where there's one person who maybe was a little crazy, a little wild, a little a little special, a little unique. And, uh, and the other person was kind of just a fuck up. And the the fuck ups they they look at these people that are that are kind of weird and they idolize them model themselves after them in a way that in a way that takes the 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 fundamental personality traits and characteristics of the of the fuck ups and by fuck ups you know I'm being pretty general but I mean I guess I mean people who often make the kind of mistakes that are that are byproducts of I guess like lacking <laughs> lacking personality traits people that are either lazy or they're impulsive you know and it kind of and it kind of fucks up their life the the kind of people I'm talking about that they model themselves after are people that are let's say eccentric but they're but they're willfully deliberately and consistently eccentric and so so I've, what i've seen is that the kind of people that are that are kind of fuck ups that are kind of incompetent they model themselves after these eccentric oddities and in in the act of identifying that person as their idol they then grant themselves um, some of these characteristics. So, so it allows them to sort of think for themselves, see, now I'm not a fuck up. I'm just an eccentric, like my idol here. And yeah, sometimes it's like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with uh, interesting examples. There are, there's there's a couple of people that I've known that were um, manic depressive and like and pretty heavily medicated for it, and so even when they even when they weren't really partying and drinking and doing drugs and stuff, they were they were pretty animated. They were pretty crazy. They were pretty extroverted, and and then and they were friends with people who looked up to the extroversion, looked up to the wild and, and crazy extroverted, you know, party animal and, and, and tried to sort of align themselves with that, but really just as a, as a means to excuse their own drinking or their own drug addiction, where it's like before they had an alcohol problem, but now they were embracing this, this, this thing. It's this whole lifestyle now, you know. It's it's not just this, this way that I've been fucking my life up with alcohol. Let's say. And and every time I've seen this, it's it's always at first it starts with these people. Let let's say like these these little imps in the you know these little minions of the devil people at first they always idolize this person and it's always 
and this is one interpretation of the devil where it's like it's someone that initiates you into the depths of chaos and the the creative subconscious animal urges you know and a lot of people a lot of people embrace that they're like yeah i'm just tapping into my animal into, not even the animal into my creative self i'm just expressing myself i'm just you know <laughs> indulging in these natural whatever whatever method they have of explaining this and they and they point to this this character and they're like this isn't this isn't the devil this is this is a great person that's going to guide me to these amazing places now it's very rare that the that the followers attain the degree of specialization or accomplishment or you know creativity sexual freedom what whatever it is of of that devil character that that individual they align themselves with and for one it's because they're never truly following the the path that that person is i don't know presenting um they're just trying to they're aligning themselves with that person because it's it allows them it's the closest thing that allows them to express their own again fucked up maladjusted neurotic behaviors um, it, it allows them to redefine those things that they do that they're not happy with and 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 so one of the dangers here is you know there's there are always people that are going to morally look down on you and there are always people that are going to morally look up to you you're never going to find yourself really at the top or at the very bottom of the moral hierarchy and and out of all the people that look up to you morally you know i don't believe that there is a single objective uh one true virtue that all of the moral structures are built around so out of all the people that idolize you and look up to you morally there's going to be there's going to be a lot of variance in which qualities of yours are the, are the ones that are being morally looked up to and so one of the one of the dangers here is that in this particular situation that i think this is symbolizing these individuals that are going to be you know worshiping you celebrating you or whatever they're celebrating quite possibly the kind of qualities that you don't even think of you don't even identify as the you know your ideal qualities it's just they happen again to be to be close to the kind of personal faults that these followers have that you know they could spend time confronting their shortcomings working on them but why bother doing all of that when you could just find someone who you think embodies uh an explanation like a like a positive justification for those things they're not faults they're skills and talents right but so that misidentification is one thing um meaning that you know it, it's a situation where you attract you know, you're attracting people that are attracted to you for qualities that you yourself don't initially celebrate now some people they uh they become seduced by this like by this kind of worship and admiration um again i've seen i've seen this happen in a couple weird ways where it's like i've had friends that you know it started with innocently posting that one photo of of them in a bikini and then people start you know really giving this person the thumbs up just based on this kind of physical objectification and that person just really loves the attention they try to post some other photos they don't seem to get any likes so they go back to trying posting the photos where they expose themselves and the likes come back so they just keep going down that path whatever gets you more thumbs up whatever gets you more likes and then i've known people that turn into you know essentially prostitutes because it's just how how much further can you go in this direction you know you get approval for 
and and these were people that initially again they they weren't people that thought of themselves as like you know defined themselves by their physical appearance or by how much of themselves they're willing to expose or something like that um the other <clears throat> the other issue with this card is that because these people that are identifying with you following you because they're doing that again to cover up for their own you know they're, they're trying to disguise their own shortcomings the things about themselves that they don't they don't feel comfortable with following you can't it can't lead to any successful transformatory event because it's the whole thing is is just these people trying to disguise their own faults and shortcomings so sooner or later those faults and shortcomings come through nonetheless the facade breaks and then, then at that point you know who do you think they're going to blame they didn't blame themselves to begin with they've only been following you and, and raising you up on this pedestal um, to cover up their own shortcomings they're certainly not going to do it now so now they're going to blame you and then I think this is this is the moment at which they will essentially call you the devil you know now they'll be like oh you're the devil you're just this horrible demonic thing that tempted me all along you tricked me into wanting to descend into this thing it's like that's that's when this gets labeled that's when you get this label and and i think that there is i think that there is a, a subset of the population you know that are they they have these they have these drives they have these primal drives and they just don't they haven't internalized them or accepted them they have they have conflicting feelings on one hand they want to they want to get down and dirty and be lewd and do fucked up shit on the other hand they still have some deeply internalized i don't know religious standards their parents taught them to be good something so they've got these conflicts they're trying to rectify the situation these people are always looking for some representative of this kind of behavior that they have mixed feelings about to follow and they and they will always enthusiastically begin uh, and then it always ends with blaming that individual for what was just their attempt to, you know, exercise their own demons. But yeah, careful, you know, don't get don't get seduced by these kinds of people that are just like really excited to follow you. And on the flip side, the chariot, um, pretty similar, pretty similar layout. You know, that one central figure up high, and then these two figures down here. Um, I think the opportunity here is to is to harness <laughs> harness the energies of people that are uh, attracted to you that want you to hitch your wagon to them that want to lend you their their energy or voices I think it's it's a very political kind of card you know it's like people who are passionate about making you their politician and politician in the sense of the definition of that word where like politic means something like the movement of people moving people right so it's like you get the the one political figure and he says we need to do this and then it inspires the masses to move and, and do something somebody who's directing energy or resources now how is it different from from this card right how can you if somebody says hey this sounds like a great idea i want to follow you like how do you how do you know if they're the kind of people that you you want to hitch your wagon to you want to let them do this work for you and versus these kinds of people you know um for one these people are going to be hitching themselves to you they're going to be they're going to be following you as opposed to you know these kinds of individuals that are they they want to do the the work they want to pull you so it's a little different in that sense but also these the kinds of people that you that you want because you got to be you know you got to be discerning so you don't get stuck with these guys um these people essentially have pretty high standards the kind of people who 
have skills or talents of value and and then they they want those talents to be used <clears throat> because you know they don't see themselves as the the leaders they they don't identify with taking on that responsibility but they want their talents and skills to be used so then how do they decide right because they're, they're going to be picky these sphinxes or these uh i love these horses little winky horse wink wink what's that all about um i think that i think that what the kinds of people that you want pulling you are going to respond to <clears throat> i think it's two things for one you're you're going to be well educated you're going to be very learned learned on both sides of whatever of whatever the political issue or whatever the project is you know these are these are people that are going to really respect someone who understands both sides who understands the strength strengths and weaknesses of both sides all right and this is pretty rare because in politics in 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 most uh, human nature there's this interesting bias where it's like if you if you support the idea of something as being good or useful you generally adopt a stance of it being in fact not just good and useful but it's perfect and it having no flaws and then whatever the opposite is you adopt a stance that it's terrible and has nothing of value to contribute whereas most most things are you know a mix uh, I remember reading about a study where people you know the it interviewed people who either believe that airplanes are essentially cool or airplanes are bad and you know some people were like airplanes are awesome there's never crashes there's nothing wrong with airplanes you know they're just perfect and the other group were like airplanes are terrible not only are they dangerous and they crash all the time but they use huge amounts of fuel and they're bad for the environment and you know but they saw nothing nothing redeemable about airplane but so we're not talking about those kinds of people we're talking about the kind of people and again, and again is it less likely for the kind of people who have those biases those really strong biases where it's all or nothing is it likely that those people are going to be the ones that really rise to positions of or not even positions but are they the ones who are going to become really talented and really strong and skilled in certain areas or are those the kinds of biases that are going to hold them back right i think this card suggests like you know the latter it's like it's the people who have more of an open mind more of a philosophical approach of seeking out the, the truth and the value and not just adopting some biased all-encompassing all-or-nothing stance it's probably more likely so for one the kinds of people that could really help you that could really pull you are they're going to respond they're going to respect you being able to demonstrate that you could see both sides of an issue and that you've spent time and you've studied both sides and you're aware of both of their strengths and weaknesses right and also that you have picked a side and that you are fully committed to that side in spite of understanding its weaknesses you know so you have you have a well-educated position and that well-educated stance where you're like oh there's some good there's some bad it doesn't it doesn't contribute to putting you in a position where you're also like well i'm kind of on side a and i'm kind of on side b nonetheless you still pick a side and you stick with it and you're dedicated to it and you represent that dedication by you know publicly you wear their colors their flag whatever it is you're not you're not afraid to you're not afraid to essentially stand up and and just be obviously visible as a member of whatever that cause is whatever that project is you are openly for it and this is and it's almost like this as far as the world is concerned this is what comes first because first people will generally see that you're for or against a cause and then often people will have these really strong reactions that people you know, let's say you're for something you know the the charioteer he's 
the chariot is adorned with this this blue uh, fabric with white stars on it, right? So obviously he's on he's on the blue team, right? So people on the red team they're gonna see this guy, and the first reaction they're gonna have is "fuck you, blue team sucks," right? The first thing they're they're not gonna notice at first that this guy actually knows this shit on both sides, and that's why I think people who come to realize that you actually know what you're talking about have that added respect for the fact that you chose a side nonetheless because on some level they know that you probably deal with a lot of shit from people who they're they're not going to approach you say oh interesting i see you've picked the blue side i would like to know why you came to that decision you know like they know you're going to deal with a lot of people that are just going to impulsively attack you based on it so there's there's an element of that of that courage and that dedication to that one side that's going to that's going to inspire them. And I and I kind of like how in this in this weight version as opposed to this uh, Marseille, I like that the uh, the sphinxes are opposite colors because I do think that individuals like this and this card is you know suggesting that there's some opportunity to get some of this experience yourself. Um, to to be seen as this kind of to be identified as this this charioteer that is, you know, worthy in this sense. I've seen people like this, and I've seen, and I've seen the teams of people that they that they put together. And often those teams are like they're like these sphinxes, like these black and white teams, where the people working for them are all over the place in terms of their political beliefs, their cultural backgrounds, whatever. But all of a sudden, none of that matters because of the one thing that they're working towards is a more worthy goal than the, uh, you know, defense of their individual particular values and the attack of others or whatever. This kind of, this kind of individual, I think, is really great at just rallying, rallying people around one central cause. And often it's that kind of cult of personality that forms around them and their convictions. But, um, yeah, nonetheless something to something to consider and maybe keep an eye out for that's going to be it for me for today thanks for watching uh drop me a like if you enjoyed the video feel free to comment free reading or something along those lines for your chance to win a free one-on-one -on -one tarot reading um thanks again for watching i'll see you tomorrow take care